Hi everyone, we are live again this month with our monthly meet on um, two different channels, OAS Bangalore and none. So uh, I would like to give it to Nikhil first so that we can talk about none and then I will brief you about OAS. Nikhil, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Vandana. Hey everyone, good morning. Uh, I hope you guys are doing good in the uh, you know, this pandemic time and uh, you know, I know everyone's back at home now. So uh, a small introduction about Null, uh, what it does and all of that. So before that, I'm, I'm Nikhil. Uh, so I'm one of the chapter leads for Null Bangalore. And uh, talking about Null, so Null is an open security community. Uh, you know, and uh, this chapter is of Bangalore. Uh, you know, it's, it's a Null Bangalore chapter. So this meet that is happening right now is a combined meet of both OWASP uh, Bangalore as well as Null Bangalore. So just like this meet, you know, uh, we have a bunch of other uh, formats as well. Like uh, there is something called as Nal Hamla, which is more of the offensive security. Uh, and there is uh, offensive side of the security. And there is something similar to that called as Bachao, which is the uh, you know defensive side of the security. And we do have a couple of things like uh, you know, one more format called as uh, Pulia sessions. So Pulia sessions are basically the bridging sessions, uh, you know, for for uh, you know uh, you know newcomers or beginners to sort of understand a couple of concepts like you know something like what how exactly Docker works or how exactly virtual machines work and all of that. So uh, so we have different formats. Uh, you know just because of this whole uh, COVID situations, we are not able to sort of conduct those uh, different formats and we are sort of you know stuck to this one right now. But uh, very soon, you know, we should be again back with those formats as well. So. Yeah, I think, and for any any other information, I think you can you can uh, certainly go and check it out on null.co.in. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, one. So, hi everyone. I am one of the chapter leaders uh, for OWASP Bangalore, and uh, OWASP is Open Web Application Security Project. This meet we combine and we make sure that we have the speakers on the platform, and especially um, from Bangalore. And now we have uh, uh, all the online meets, so we want to make sure that all the global speakers also come on the platform and speak. So today we have our first speaker, uh, Swapnil Pandya. So I'll give it over to Swapnil to get started with the session. Swapnil, over to you. Yeah, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, myself, Swapnil here. And uh, yeah, for today's session, I uh, first of all, I hope you all guys are able to see my screen, correct? Yes, we can see. OK. So uh, basically, starting with forensics part today, will go uh, ahead and in the field of forensics i mean cyber forensics uh, the topic is usb forensics as you all can see about me myself swapnil pandya i am a security enthusiast and you can say cyber forensics expert as well i work with uh, different cyber cells uh, based on Vadodara, Ahmedabad, and gandhinagar cyber crime branches along with that i am a co-founder at inferno infosec which is a, a startup where uh, we do guys provide services based on security mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm an active member of uh, Null Ahmedabad as well. I used to participate and used to give sessions over there as well. Uh, today, I, I get an opportunity here to connect with more people. So I, I grabbed that. Coming to the agenda, we'll uh, cover this many points over here. That is the first is forensics and its branch. I mean, wh what is forensics and wh what are the other branches of cyber forensics? Then we'll go with the digital data as it is totally based on that. And we'll see types of data storages because that is the most important thing I can say here to check with the data where it, it resides, right? Then we'll show my approach to investigation. I mean, how do I start investigating if any case is there? Then we'll see what is USB forensics, how it can be used. We'll check the data integrity as well. I mean, why it is required to check data integrity. Then history of connected USB devices. That is, uh, if if we collect any of the evidence from the crime scene, based on the uh, cyber crime, we do need to check this type of things whether any of the USB or any of the peripheral devices being connected to the system or not, for uh, gathering more information and data. Then we'll see why data recovery is most important thing when it comes to cyber forensics or we can say cyber crime cases. Because the main motive of the attackers are to, uh, you know, make data unavailable or to delete or modify the data. So there it becomes most important thing to recover the data. Then we'll go ahead with the data recovery tools. 
it will be bifurcated in the two types with uh, a freeware as well as a paid one and then uh, we'll check out with the you know practical that how we can uh, delete a data permanently and then retrieve the same thing to the same position so we'll go ahead step by step in this field starting with forensics uh, as we all know like in 90s and in 80s uh, or even in, in in a decade back when whenever forensics word comes in our mind it feels like okay doctors and the team of forensics will be going to the crime scene and collecting the evidences fingerprints and all these things right but nowadays uh, like crimes are happening related to cyber field as well to the digital data and digital things so yeah now we do also exist so forensics refers to the collection of investigation uh, a collection and investigation of evidence using scientific tests tools and techniques there are multiple tools multiple techniques which are being used to gather evidences then further examination can lead to the information about past which happened during crime and the same can be presented in court of law the the same way uh, you know the other forensics teams used to do that is i can say a uh, medical forensics team we used to do the same we here used to do over <coughs> sorry so a digital forensics is also a branch as we discussed that uh, surrounds the recovery and investigation of materials found in digital devices such as computer laptops smartphones and uh, many more like printers and all the most important purpose uh, to i mean why digital forensics is to recreate the crime scene for further investigation whether it is a, a you know a upi fraud or a, a hack based on any web server web application or a network as well so it is most important to go into the deep root just to find the root cause coming to the forensics branch i mean basically i'll talk about digital forensics only over here because that is only the part of i mean we do focus so there are five types of forensics uh, branches exist mainly it is computer forensics network forensics then mobile forensics database forensics and then lastly a uh, forensics data analysis right uh, after performing all the data i, I mean forensics stuffs and techniques and tools using tools we do gather information in the form of data now uh, after that it is important to analyze the data which is being gathered so uh, that is also the important task over here so these are the mainly five fields i can say uh, which are focused in the digital forensics whether uh, i mean then uh, ahead you can do specialization in any of the one or in the all was all goes interconnected digital evidence now uh, how an evidence will be digital i mean obviously it is a question that uh, you know evidence in the form uh, we we do call witnesses to uh, give the statement but uh, while in the form of digitalization we we do need digital evidence that refers to the data which is being uh, stored in any of the medium by computer system or similar devices that is laptops or palm tops or tablets then uh, the digital evidence tends to be more comprehensive hard to destroy obviously more voluminous easily modified easily duplic uh, duplicated and potentially more expensive if uh, expressive we can say okay so uh, yeah we all know that we whatever things we guys are doing and nowadays we all have a digital signature correct so it is hard to you know destroy digital evidence as we are going to see that even if a data is being deleted permanently we guys are able to you know retrieve the same thing uh, which is being deleted or th there is no place even in the recycle bin so that that implies is or that tells us very clearly that uh, it is hard to destroy the same thing also more voluminous because it, it may be of 100 gb 1 tb 2 tb 10 tb depends on the data or the target which we have then obviously it can be easily modified by uh, finding loopholes and vulnerabilities and exploiting those things and getting access to the database uh, we can duplicate it as well uh, and uh, send it to the uh, you know victim or or, or the other party uh, between whom the communication is going on so these all points refer to uh, digital evidence then digital evidence can be in the form of a image file audio file uh, any pdf document zip file and lots of i mean whatever things are available for digital that refers to digital evidence okay when when we do investigate and when we uh, find any of the data while 
uh, going ahead with the process of digital evidence gathering chain of custody and other things so this is what the uh, importance or i can say definition of digital evidence which uh, is the which which you know refers to nothing but a uh, at data or i can say a chunk of data which is there in the form of digital moving ahead we'll uh, see the places i mean where data can be resides obviously these are not the enough ones but uh, yeah these are the most important ones and nowadays being used very generally that is computers external hard drives uh, uh, then cds dvds thumb drives floppy disk yeah floppy disk are also uh, there in few cases if we see then cell phones <clears throat> the voice over ip phones i mean vips then answering machines uh, i'll share you one incident of that as well answering machine as well then electronic gaming devices <clears throat> which is being used for communication as well then we'll see digital re video recorders usbs routers switches uh, that comes under the network part servers uh, related to web applications and in network as well pdss and lots more i mean right these all are, are are devices which are being used for any of the digital work and also it is being used to store as well as to transfer digital data from one uh, device to another device so uh, these are the maximum places where you can find any of the data now uh, moving ahead i would like to share my uh, you know approach of investigation that how i personally start uh, uh, you know investigating if i if, if i get any reference or if i get any case to investigate for cyber crime so first of all i'll i'll acquire the at the evidence at the crime scene i mean whether it is a crime scene or if we find anyone who comes to us i mean in the form of a victim we'll acquire that evidence first I mean, whether it is a smart a smartphone or a tablet or a laptop, then we'll completely form uh, you know from uh, form the evidence and set up a chain of custody. Now, a chain of custody refers to uh, the process of uh, you know going ahead with the documentations which are there to make it a complete reference that what we have gathered in a physical form. and uh, uh, what are the things were there how many uh, you know amount of data i mean how many how much size of data we have gathered and all the minor informations will be you know uh, detailed informations i can say will be there in that chain of custody i mean setting up a chain of custody then we'll safely move the uh, you know from the crime scene we will move it to the uh, computer forensics lab using you know that uh, uh, i can say that bags are over available there i uh, basically i can I, i would say silicon bags uh, are there which uh, are you know interference uh, uh, what word i can use but yeah it it, it stops the you know micro waves or uh, infrared waves which can corrupt our data so it can save us from corrupting any of the high range waves which are going ahead or or the uh, waves which are coming to the uh, data to in, in the form of you know uh, going ahead and destroying the data so we'll move it safely with that then we'll prepare a forensics environment that is lab setup uh, uh, tools which are being used for investigating then uh, computers and networks and all the scenarios we'll make a first of all uh, then the most important task which comes over here is making a copy of the evidence right obviously uh, we all know that we cannot just directly go ahead with the thing which we have gathered we need to make a secure copy of it and we need to make on the copy itself we do not have permission to touch even the original evidence which we have gathered or uh, to do anything on that so obviously it it, it becomes most important thing to you know make a copy of the evidence and then uh, move ahead with the investigation after successful investigation you need to make a proper or neat and clean i can say a report which states very clearly that these are the things which are being there which we have gathered and this clearly proves that uh, this was the whole scenario which was happened in the past and uh, this is how it has happened and other relevant informations and then uh, we can submit the same to the re representative officer or the lawyer in the, the court of law so this this is the uh, basic approach of investigation i can say where uh, these points are there or uh, the same way we we know the ethical hacking life cycle kind of thing so this is a, also a cycle that we need to you know follow the processes one by one
now uh, the, the, there is a basic model of uh, you know in a digital evidence i mean uh, where you have to follow this procedure as i said that there are few of the you know steps which we need to do that is acquire evidence okay in, in that phase you can see identification phase where we need to identify the electronic devices whether it is a memory card a pen drive or i mean a usb drive a laptop or any of the digital device that we need to identify first in this phase then we need to acquis acquisition of evidence then uh, i mean there it comes that we need to collect those devices then uh, authenticate evidence that comes where we need to check the authenticity of the evidence or the data which is there right and also the data which is which we has uh, gathered after performing some uh, steps or using some tools and techniques to uh, gather or retrieve the data from that particular device after that in analysis the analyze the data that refers to the analysis phase where uh, we need to check we need to analyze we need to go ahead in the history where uh, we can analyze the data we can you know predict a scenario based on the data which we have in our hand uh, in simple words if i say threat intelligence or threat uh, you know threat response is something kind of that where we we go ahead we do case studies of the you know past incidents which has happened in the past and go ahead with the data or the results of that and then we predict what has happened on the same way we do analysis then pre solution phase where we start making the reports over there which states that uh, these are the uh, you know these are the scenarios which has happened the, these are the devices which are being used in the uh, cyber crime these are the steps which must have been followed by the attacker and these are the uh, you know fault actions which, uh, which which must have been taken from the victim which may have led this to be a crime with them so this this is the whole evidence basic model i can say and this this thing should be followed by any anyone i mean including all the uh, government officials working in this field as well as the you know third parties where or private investigating officers who are there to go ahead with this scenarios so this is the very basic thing which we have to keep in mind while going ahead with some investigation process then uh yeah for history uh this is the i mean i have written down the steps i will show you the practical as well i mean how we can go ahead and check out the you know history of the connected usbs or any other peripheral devices that uh, we need to first uh, go ahead and hit run then uh, the rigid uh, reg edit that is registry editor we need to type over there we need to open that same thing you can type it in the search menu as well but this is the uh, you know a common way to go ahead with that and we need to check this uh, file over there that is hk local machine system uh, current control enum and usb store i will show you this then uh, this is the place where I, I i said that usb devices i mean the information of the usb devices will be stored i mean whatever or you know whichsoever device has been connected to your system or to that particular evidence system that you can find using this place okay this will uh, give details like usb i mean address then volume size how much volume of the drive is being connected then drivers the name of device hardware id and more i mean the mac address kind of thing or uh, the id from where it, it is being manufactured we can go ahead then it goes in the investigation mode that if if we find any of the hardware name their id and the device uh, obviously every digital device has their own identity so we go ahead with that then we go to see that whosoever has bought that thing and and this is how the investigation goes on just like the way we normally used to see in any of the uh, you know seasons or any of the uh, movies kind of thing so in real world that refers to the same most mostly the same but there are some uh, pros and cons i mean there are some laws there are some rules and regulations which should be followed properly so this is the thing let's go ahead with the uh, practical of this thing i mean we'll check out the same how we can go and look at the history of this first then we'll move ahead okay uh, i'll share my screen with uh, you guys fine okay 
I'll just uh, uh, I the R. Okay, cool. So, uh, yes, this was the thing which uh, we were looking at. Let me uh, open this so that you guys can have a better view of it. Okay, cool. So here, if you see H K local machine, we need to go ahead. That is this H K local machine. Okay. Then in that system should be there. That is this uh, system folder. Then uh, current control set as written over here. After that, there will be in in num folder which stores information. And then in that, uh, here is the U S B store. A U S B. You you can find you know lots of informations. That is, if there is any HD audio device is being connected, or any storage is there, then uh, you know display device that is external monitor or uh, any of the big monitor is being connected or not. So it, it refers to those other different types of devices, peripheral devices. As I said, we are focusing towards the USB store. So we'll go ahead with this USB store. If you see. Uh, here you can check out the information uh, related to the same. I need to open this. Yes. So uh, you guys can look that uh, generic multi-card USB device is being uh, connected to this particular laptop. Okay. Where uh, you can say this is the uh, size of that. Then this refers to the registry. I mean where the information is being stored then okay so this is the address of its memory the capabilities the same way if we will see okay uh, here also you can uh, see this friendly name is HP USB device that refers to some of the pen drive being connected with the uh, company of HP. Okay. Here you can see uh, hardware ID is over there. Then we'll check other one. Okay. Here you can see the Jet Flash Transcan uh, 16 GB, which is being connected multiple times. Okay. This is also the information that is 16 GB is over there. Uh, here also you can see where is the compatible IDs are being used then drivers which are being used to connect this USB with the laptop okay the service what service it provides that is a disk for transformation of information so this is how all the devices are being over there this is Toshiba trans memory USB device so uh, you, you will get it in your own system as well. I mean, whatever the USB devices you have been connected in the form of pen drive or uh, uh, hard drive, you will see there. So this is where uh, we can gather the history of this from the registry file. We all know these things based on Windows. The same applies to Linux based operating systems as well, where we do have multiple folders over there to gather the information on the same. Okay. So, uh, okay, moving ahead, we'll see integrity of data. Now, uh, first of all, why, why we need to check the integrity of data? I mean, why it uh, it is needed to check it, right? Because uh, in, in the digital era, we do not know the person who is posing as a person is actually the person over there or not. So for that reason, we need to check the integrity of the data. There are a lot of man in the middle attacks and spoof attack and all these things are going ahead. So for that purpose, we need to go ahead with the integrity check. So that is the most important thing we, we do in this digital era. Mainly two types of integrity that is physical integrity and logical integrity. Okay. Physical integrity may refers to uh, the device which is being, you know, we have purchased or which is being there. I mean, the person who was using and has uh, delivered the same device to us, right? Logical integrity refers to uh, the check of data that is normally enforced in database system by a series of integrity constraints of rule. 
that refers to md for md checksum of uh, uh, you know all the files we we can see we even do have normally seen that you know whenever we guys are going ahead and downloading any of the operating system from any of the url there it is shown that you need to check after download you need to check the md file some of the uh, the file right iso file so that is the main purpose that uh, while downloading from any of the link which is given by uh, there by them uh, the file is the integrated and the same file which they guys are delivering to us or the file is being changed so even a minor i can say a very minor change is there the md5 checksum will not be the same okay so that we need to check whether the file is you know correct or not then uh, whenever there is any change as i said md5 will be changed or modified even even a small minor change i can say a uh, less than 1 kb even uh, will refer to the md5 checksum changed so this is the uh, most easiest way we can say to check the integrity of the data which is being transferred from one place to another place and uh, from person to person whether it is in the form of uh, messenger chat or in the form of email conversation <clears throat> or in the form of physical transformation using any of the usb devices so or in, in the form of sending over the network so this is the uh, most important uh, part and the way to uh, you know check the reality or i can say the uh, absolute thing of the data uh, which assures us that it is not being uh, you know changed or i can say manipulated or modified so uh, this is what the uh, we can say integrity of data is now uh, coming to the point usb forensics uh, in digital forensic analysis of usb device includes preservation collection validation identification analysis and documentation as we have seen in the digital evidence basic model the same applies to usb devices as well because ultimately it is also a, a part of digital evidence so we'll go ahead with this form sometimes it is necessary to check whether the given file from the usb is as it is uh, the sender sent or not that is where the integrity part comes to check the same okay in many cases it happens that the attacker manipulates the sensitive data by performing man in the middle attack the mostly or by spoofing the identity of a particular sender to the attacker then uh, we see uh, attackers can also try to implement virus or malware behind the sensitive data that is any of the image file or any of the you know video or audio file as we see as in the form of trojans which cannot uh, you know which cannot only harm the data but sometimes it leads to the take away remote control as well as we have seen this uh, scenarios many times that you know by even clicking on the image or link the devices are being hacked if if it is a smartphone device or if it is a computer or a laptop okay so this is the same scenario where it happens i mean the work of trojan is then uh, yes so for that uh, to you know ensure the solution of this problems usb forensics is required and used uh, whenever the data is being transported from one place to another place in that scenario it, it becomes must to do uh, usb forensics and to check out that what is the data integrity and uh, is it the real one or not or, or it is being modified right now uh, why i mean we, we see what is data recovery then uh, uh, now we will see why it is important one so obviously unwanted accidents may happen and the evidence should not get affected of it uh, this happened with us i mean obvious i i can say that you know this must have happened to all of us whether it is in the big form or in the small form where that you know we accidentally delete some images or some files which should not be deleted but uh, you know we were in the rush or we were in the middle of something else which led us to delete those kind of things so uh, in the in that scenario this recovery data recovery becomes the most important part where we can gather the access of the data okay so in order to uh, avoid such circumstances we use data recovery techniques where we can get the data back so uh, yeah i mean i can say 100% data recovery can be done but uh, it is not the full proof thing where you must have recovered the 100% of the data which you were having previously okay 
but yeah we we do uh, i i mean I, i can say from my personal experience we we must have got 80 to 90% of the data which was lost so this this these are the things i mean the core reasons are uh, physical damage obviously if, if our device is being damaged we can get that data if if it is recoverable then data theft in the form of uh, I, i can say you know uh, the the theft of the you know laptop or uh, i can say the lost of our uh, phone or digital device or also we can say that uh, you know by by hacking into someone's phone or you know taking away that data and then deleting i mean first uh, uh, using some vulnerabilities uh, such as sql injection and other we we rc and all we do uh, dump the data and then we wipe out that data from that device or from that position so th- that that refers to data theft corrupted disk uh, this has happened many times in our school days when uh, you know we we do transfer games or files from one friend to another friend's computer the device gets con- corrupted or i can say the you know files which are being corrupted nowadays also it refers that many time uh, you know due to some unwanted softwares or also i can say due to some uh, ransomware or kind of thing we we do loss of our data and it, it it makes our device connected disk corrupted and converts the form of the data so that is also one reason operating system failure yes it it happens many times uh, that you know even if we try to upgrade our system from one version of the especially i can say in the form of linux uh, there are solutions av- available to you know get access to the um, data or to to the system by going ahead in with the recovery mode and all these things but yeah it, it, the uh, the issue of this open source i can say is whenever there is an update in the kernel level and that is not being supported or i can say it is not stable yet and uh, without going ahead with the check uh, checking that this particular version is being stable or not or or any of the person has been you know faced any of the issues with that we we do face this operating system failure as well even in windows based operating systems we uh, do that i mean we face that same thing many times it fails to boot up or uh, grub loader gets corrupted or gets you know a uh, non functional i can say so in that scenarios data recovery is the most important thing which can help us with the access of our data then uh, uh now tools for data recovery multiple tools available into the market who claims data recover you know to recover your data up to 100% as i said but again that that differs on the you know uh, tools whether it is a freeware or a paid one uh then uh, if it is someone who is from a genuine organization or uh, someone who is just telling you to help so it, it refers to individual but uh, as per my knowledge 100% data recovery is something which is you know a rare scenario these tools can be bifurcated as i said into the paid ones and the open source a uh, few of the open sources are there i mean in case <coughs> sorry ftk manager slute kit uh disk drill foremost and so on these are the i mean mostly these are available in the uh kali linux and parrot os for uh, forensics part but uh, we can use this things in windows based operating systems as well we will be using slute kit uh, one of the part of slute kit is a uh, photo rack which we are going to use in this practical to recover the data which we we deleted permanently so these are the most important uh, tools and also i i can say these are these tools are being used by me as well uh, so i i can sh- surely tell you that uh, you can somewhat rely on these tools <clears throat> moving ahead uh, let's see the practical i will show you how i'll be deleting the data from uh, you know usb device and then how uh, we will be recovering the same thing so let me share you my screen now i'm connecting my usb with this system okay <clears throat> these are the images uh, what i'll do is i'll just paste it outside so that we uh, get a better idea okay I... let's delete this first yes 
so uh, these are the different images as uh, you all guys see okay just uh, see these images i mean remember these images once we delete we'll recover these only okay so now i will delete them uh, using shift delete as you can see that uh, are you sure you want to permanently delete these seven items i'll say yes go ahead and uh, yeah you can see we have deleted the same thing uh, the folder is empty okay now uh, we'll check out how we can uh, go ahead with that that is i have that uh, photo rack available over here i'll open this okay so uh, basically see I, i'll explain you with the steps as well uh, you need to uh, pay attention a little bit over here more uh, it, it asks us to select a device i mean okay if, if we go ahead with reading stuffs we will be easily able to uh, have hands on these things so first thing it is asking about my uh, you know hard disk which is over there in this system that is of 500 gb okay that is sda and uh, the memory i mean pen drive usb device which i have uh, connected that is jet flash transcan 16 gb that shows over here as sdc so we need to select the device from where we are going ahead with the recovery of it i will hit proceed then we need to check out that which is the uh, you know part of that i mean the for uh, the i can say sector or the you know partition of this particular device whether it is having a partition or not so as i see i will i have already given the name gray to my device as you guys can check over here right to the usb device i'll uh, select this fat32 because it is based on uh, windows i'll uh, hit enter over there so uh, okay it is asking me that you know ext2 or extension 2 or 3 or else others so now see this tool sometimes works automatically it will select based on the device which we are using it and what is the beneficiary thing for this device but if we are aware of that particular thing that okay we are going with the uh, you know uh, this uh, ext format file system that is uh, the linux based system if i say then we need to select that or we can hit the other as well then uh, it will ask please choose if all space needs to be analyzed Uh, that is you know scan for files from fat32 unlocated space only or the whole partition we'll go ahead with the you know 32 unlocated uh, space only because that, that is what we have selected previously over uh, here you can see that is p fat32 okay so first i'll uh, click directory listing in progress okay So now what it is asking is please select the destination to save the recovered files. So it is asking us to select the file where we can go ahead and uh, you know save this files. Let me check if I have. Uh, okay, just a moment. Okay, I, I'll move back to the folder and I'll check out my pen drive location. Okay. Because that is where we need to retrieve the same thing, which is being deleted. So, uh, okay, we are in the C windows. We need to again go back. We are in the C. We need to again go back. That is a uh, D, G, and E. So, uh, okay, here uh, we say we can see that gray is given as a D. Okay, as a D, uh, you know, partition. So I I'll hit enter D. yes uh this is the thing system volume information that that refers that we are in the correct place of the usb device itself because mostly they have this system volume information in them so yes now what i need to uh, once i get to the destination what i need to do is here it is written that press c when the destination is correct okay so uh i'll press c now it is analyzing it is recovering see here only first we have recovered that folder it will recover let's let's just you know uh, uh run this for a while 
I mean, the time will increase obviously, but we'll wait for two to three minutes. That you know, once the files are maximally recovered, here you can see PDFs and JPGs and all these things. Then we'll stop it and we'll check whether we have recovered the same or not. So let's just wait for a while to see. Here you can see it. It you know uh, recovers the zip files, PDF, uh, then JPGs, uh, PNGs, text files, uh, then document files as well. And uh, some other as well having extension dot tx. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's just stop it. As we can see, JPG is 33 and PNG 7 are being recovered. We just hope that we have recovered the same or uh, we need to wait for one minute more. Let's wait for it. Okay, I'll hit stop. Uh, answer why uh, to really quit? No, to continue. Well, quit it. Okay, here you can see uh, 309 files is stored in this particular drive that we can see over here. Recovery aborted by the user. Okay, if I hit quit, I am out to the main uh, menu. I'll hit quit and we'll close it. Now, in this, we'll check these were the images, correct? This, 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 and this. And there, there were seven images, right? If I'm not wrong, which we have deleted, we have recovered them first. Then there are lots of images I must have used in this pen drive or Word files, you can say, which is recovered as well along with this. So, uh, uh, you know, th this, this helps us to know to see whether uh, you know we guys are recovering the data or not so this this is how we can you know recover our data this is the process of, of going ahead with usb forensics you can say this but uh, one one point i would like to add up over here is that uh, the quality of the data will be reduced while processing this thing for your personal use i suppose image is in high quality you will see it as a reduce in the quality and in the file as well if i see uh, the property of it the file size is uh, okay it is 3.9 mb that's good or else you know it reduces to the kb even so this is what is the recovery of it let's uh, go ahead with this so we have seen this uh, recovery i mean from initially if i recall the things that uh, what is forensics what is digital forensics then what is digital evidence why it is important uh digital evidence basic model then usb forensics importance of recovery the history of connected devices to our system then uh we have seen that uh, how we can retrieve the data how you know what are the tools we can use for this forensics and so on and lastly we have seen the practical that how we can you know retrieve the same thing there are lots of tools available as i said ftk manager then uh, you know, end case is there, then SLUT kit and all these things, test kit is also there. So you can use any of them by just uh, checking out on the Google. Uh, this is a place where you guys can reach me if uh, you know you want to share something or if uh, you want to know something more based on the forensics part, I will be happy to share you guys uh, that this is my email. Uh, I also used to write blogs at Dark Street Hackers. That is my own blog, you can say. Okay. So, uh, yeah, at the end, I would like to thank a whole team of Null Bangalore, that is especially Nikhil, Vandana, uh, and uh, uh, other two guys as well. Sorry for uh, you know, not remembering the name, but I, I, I'm just new over here. As I said, I am uh, actively working with M Null Ahmedabad, but I, I, I got an opportunity over here to connect with more people. So I, I grabbed that opportunity and, and uh, I am here to share my knowledge. So thank you so much guys for you know giving me this opportunity at a very short notice and uh, 
helping me with uh, connecting lots of infosec people which is the most important part of you know being a, a speaker over here that i can connect with lot of people i can learn so much things i can share my knowledge as well to uh, them and i can help as well so yeah thank you so much Thank you, Swapnil. Thank you, Swapnil. Uh, so yeah, um, there are a couple of questions that have been asked in the uh, comment section. If you can sort of help them out uh, answering them, I think that would be really helpful. Yeah, you can see it on your screen that um, we will just populate all the questions which will come on your screen. Sure, definitely. I would be happy to go ahead with that. Yeah, you can look at the screen now. in case any data uh, errors or technique uh, is it done or like clearing purging this gauzing etc is done or file system change is it possible to perform usb forensics uh see basically uh, nikhil it depends on the uh, you know this is particularly based on usb i mean uh, yeah you can go ahead with usb forensics only but in that form it won't be a, a usb drive of you know 16 gb or 32 gb you need to connect a hard disk in the form of usb device right we normally used to do and then you can uh, uh, get all the things and select the device which is being connected as a peripheral device in that right so yes you can go ahead and you can perform usb forensics in that as well because whenever a data is being deleted there are few chunks which are there in the system till the whole system gets wiped out okay wipe out in the sense a, a whole clear uh, a whole new fresh installation of uh, you know operating system by uh, going ahead and erasing everything till that time you can recover the things even after that there are lots of techniques using uh, you know laser rays and other things and other uh, updated machines i can say which helps us to recover data even after fresh installation as well Right. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you can actually reach out to him if you have any questions. We will see you in five minutes on the next uh, broadcast. Thank you so much. Stay tuned yeah. for the next one. Thank you.